Joining me now is my Forbes colleague, Money and Politics reporter Kyle Mullins. Kyle, thanks for coming on. Always great to be here, Brittany. We are almost through this series, but to remind our viewers, your team is estimating the net worths of all the Supreme Court justices. And today we're talking about Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. She was the most recent justice sworn in. So to kick off the conversation, can you give us a little bit about her backstory? Absolutely. Um, Ketanji Brown Jackson was actually born in Washington, D.C., but was raised in Miami, Florida. So she's a Floridian just like me. Um, she uh, was born, she, her, both of her parents were teachers, and uh, they moved to Florida so her dad could go to law school at the University of Miami. And she credits him with her interest in law. Uh, she says she remembers um, doing homework at the kitchen table while her dad was doing, uh, you know, law school homework. Uh, and, uh, you know, so she went to a very good uh, public high school um, and ended up going to Harvard University in, uh, when, when, you know, when, when she graduated. And um, uh, she credits that to her speech and debate club. Her speech and debate was this uh, very important thing that she was very active in in high school. Um, and she went uh, on a tournament to Harvard, uh, and that's when she was introduced to the school initially. Um, and she also credits that with her interest in sort of writing, public speaking, argument, all these kinds of things that are really important for a lawyer. So she went to Harvard, graduates, and now walk us through her law career before joining the Supreme Court in 2022. Absolutely. So after she went to Harvard for undergrad, um, she did a stint as a reporter, actually, and then ended up going to Harvard for law school. Um, she uh, graduated after you know three years, a normal, normal time frame, and uh, she did two clerkships in New England. Um, and that's not a shock because her... Uh, boyfriend at the time. She'd met her uh, boyfriend who she described as a quintessential Boston Brahmin, a sixth generation Harvard legacy. Um, she met him at Harvard on undergrad. He was going to med school. Um, so he went to Columbia for med school, then did his residency in Boston. So she bounced back and forth between New England and DC for the first couple of years. Um, she did some private practice. She did a, another uh, clerkship uh, at the Supreme Court with Justice Stephen Breyer, the person who's the justice whose seat she would fill. Um, and then she would, again, just kind of bounce back and forth, would try different private practice roles. She didn't really like private practice very much. She felt like the billable hour was, um, was really a drain on her and her family. Um, so she bounced back and forth between that. She did a, pub, a federal public defender role at one point. She was on the U.S. Sentencing Commission um, as one of their staff lawyers there. Um, and then, I mean, that brings us up to the late, uh, late early 2000s uh, when she was a uh, of counsel at a firm in D.C. That her and her husband had, new husband, had moved down to D.C. Um, he was a surgeon at Georgetown Medical Center. Um, she was working as a lawyer, and that's where her federal career starts. So from what you're saying, she bounced back between working in the public and private sector. Before we get to the number of what Forbes estimates she's worth today, do you have a sense of how much she was worth before joining the Supreme Court? Yeah, so all judicial nominees have to file these statements of net worth um, with the Senate, and most of those records you can actually find going back to when they started their judicial career. Um, so she was first nominated as a judge, uh, to become a judge by President Barack Obama, and uh, and she became a judge in 2013. Around that time, her net worth was around seven hundred thousand um, dollars. Then she was nominated to become she get another promotion to a circuit court judge uh, in 2021 by President Joe Biden. Um, and around that time, she was worth about one point seven million dollars. Um, and then less than a year later, she got the offer as a promotion to get the promotion to Supreme Court. And around that time, her net worth was about one point eight million. 